Today we're going to be answering some uh, quadratic functions by solving for x. So for problem number one, we have x squared plus 6 equal to 6. And to solve for uh, this quadratic equation, we simply subtract 6 on both sides. And we'll have x squared is equal to 0. And to have x by itself, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And we'll always have the plus or minus symbol every time we take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to 0. And since 0 is neither positive or negative, 0 is our only solution for this quadratic equation. Now for problem number 2, we're going to use the same technique, x squared plus 4 equal to 40. So we're going to subtract 4 on both sides leaving us with x squared is equal to 36 and taking the square root of both sides plus or minus square root x is equal to plus or minus 6 so the two solutions that we have would be x equal to 6 and x equal to negative 6 notice that every time we're solving for a quadratic equation we usually have two solutions in our um, answer because the maximum number of solutions for any quadratic equations will be two. So let's answer problem number three. We have 25x squared equal to 1. And in this particular problem, we'll have to solve for x, so we'll get rid of 25 by dividing 25 on both sides. And we'll have x squared equals 1 all over 25. And by taking the square root of both sides, we can simplify this radical so you can see that we can actually take the square root of 1 and the square root of 25. And since both of them are perfect squares, we'll have plus or minus 1 all over 5. So these are the two solutions of our quadratic equation for problem number three. Now for problem number four, let's write problem number four. We have nine x squared minus three equals negative one, 52. So by finding the value of x, we'll start with canceling or getting rid of the constant right next to x. So we'll end up with 9x squared equal to negative. 152 plus 3 is 149. And then the next move would be to divide both sides by 9. So we'll have x squared equals negative 149 all over 9. And in this case, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And by separating them, we'll have square root of negative 149 and the square root of 9. And we know that the square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of a negative number will be an imaginary number. And since 149 is not a perfect square, we'll end up with plus or minus i square root of 149 all over 3. And this is the special solution of problem number 4 because we have an imaginary number or a complex root for this particular quadratic equation. Now for problem number 5, four, so we'll have 9x squared minus 5 equals negative 607. So we're going to get rid of the constant by adding 5 on both sides leaving us with 9x squared equals negative 602. And by dividing both sides by 9, we'll end up with x squared equals negative 602 all over 9. And by taking the square root of both sides, we'll have an imaginary number for the numerator and a I'm sorry, this is 9. Perfect square on the denominator. So our final answer will be i squared of 602 all over 3. 
So these are the two solutions for problem number five. And for problem number six, number six will have x minus three squared equal to two. So the first move that we're going to do is to get rid of the exponent 2 by taking the square root of both sides. So we'll have x minus 3 equals plus or minus square root of 2. Notice that we can cancel the square and the square root because they're inverses of each other. And we are now left with adding 3 on both sides. And since 3 cannot be added to square root of 2, we can only rewrite it as 3 plus or minus, minus square root of 2. So the two solutions that we have could be 3 plus square root of 2 and 3 minus square root of 2. And for number 7, we have x plus 1 squared equal to 3. Same thing that we did here on number 6. We'll take the square root of both sides. So we have x plus 1 equals plus or minus square root of 3. And by subtracting 1 on both sides, we'll have x equal to negative 1 plus or minus square root of 3. And that's our solution for problem number 7. And for the last problem, we have 8, which is a factorable quadratic equation. So if we're going to uh, solve for x or the solution set, we're going to factor. And we know that negative 14 has a positive and negative factors that should give us 5 would be 7 and 2. And since we want a negative 5, so we'll have 7 as negative and 2 as positive. So we'll end up with x plus 2, x minus 7 as the factored form of the polynomial or the quadratic equation. And by doing so, we'll be able to use the zero product property. So we'll equate x plus 2 to 0 and x minus 7 equal to 0. So we'll have two solutions. One is negative 2 and the other one is positive 7. And this is how we solve for uh, the solutions of a quadratic equation. Thank you.